is the association of memories with family photographs necessary in order to appreciate them. We find them on walls and mantelpieces, on top of desks, tucked away in albums, hidden in attics and folded in wallets. Most of us have family photographs, whether it be two or two thousand, and we all have different connections and experiences with them. But why do we take them, and what is their purpose? In his book, The Decisive Moment, Henri Cartier-Bresson writes that to him, photography is a simultaneous recognition in a fraction of a second of the significance of an event as well as of a precise organisation of forms which give that event its proper expression. He believed that photographs are the result of the photographer's recognition of a significant event. This has come to be known as the decisive moment. The simple act of pressing the shutter release on a camera signifies the photographer's wish to freeze frame a specific moment in time. Aside from accidental shots, this is true for any photograph. Cartier-Bresson's photograph, Derrière la Guerre Saint-Lazare, is synonymous with the idea of the decisive moment. The photo depicts a split-second moment of a man in mid-leap, about to land in a puddle. Cartier-Bresson describes that the photo is one of chance. He says, There was a plank fence around some repairs behind the Guerre Saint-Lazare train station. I happened to be peeking through a gap in the fence with my camera at the moment the man jumped. In the book Family Snaps, Patricia Holland writes, Making and preserving a family snapshot is an act of faith in the future. Looking back at these records, made precious and mysterious with age, is an act of recognition of the past. Holland is basically saying that we take family photos with the intention of looking at them in the future in order to see what once was. Though a photograph is a record of one moment in time, numerous meanings could be attached to it, all depending on the interpreter. Holland goes on to say that interpreting family pictures poses a series of challenges to different pasts as memory interweaves with private fantasy and public history. The meaning attached to family photos are gained through personal interpretation. When a person views their family photographs, they attach memories, but not necessarily of the time depicted within the photo. If said person was absent at the time the photo was taken, they can still attach memory to the place and family members shown within the image. Annette Kun writes, Besides in its nature referring to events which cannot be retrieved or fully relived, then remembering appears to make no insistence on the presence of the rememberer at the original scene of the recollected event. Remembering is clearly an activity that takes place for as much in the present. For example, in Camera Lucida, Roland Barthes writes of his discovery of a photo of his mother shortly after her death. He calls it the Winter Garden photograph. In the picture, she is a small girl of five standing awkwardly with her brother outside a conservatory wearing a purely innocent expression. Bartz writes, I stood the little girl and at last rediscovered my mother. In this little girl's image, I saw the kindness which had formed her being immediately and forever. For once, photography gave me sentiment as certain as remembrance. Bartz has not reproduced the image of his mother for us to see. He explains that for us, it would be nothing more than an indifferent picture and that, in most, it would interest your studium. Period, clothes, photogeny, but in it for you, no wound. Bart's experience illustrates the fact that a photo can trigger memories of times unrelated to the photo. The entire experience of family photography is dependent on memory and meaning. But what if the viewer has no attachment of memory or meaning with a family photo? Can family photography be seen as something more than private and personal? It's not often that a private family photo becomes public, but there are many photographers that have extended into the genre of family photography for the purpose of their practice. These images are no longer private. They're displayed in galleries and books, open for interpretation. 
In 1992, photographer Sally Mann exhibited at the Institute of Contemporary Art in Philadelphia. The work was titled Immediate Family, which is a series of images depicting her three children, Emmett, Jesse and Virginia. To Mann, these photos depicted nothing more than portraits of her children, but others viewed them as child pornography and branded Mann as an irresponsible mother. Another example of family photography in the public eye comes in the form of Richard Billingham's book, Raise a Laugh. The book's introduction reads, This book is about my close family. My father Raymond is a chronic alcoholic. He doesn't like going outside and mostly drinks homebrew. My mother Elizabeth hardly drinks, but she does smoke a lot. She likes pets and things that are decorative. They married in 1970 and I was born soon after. My younger brother Jason was taken into care when he was 11, but is now back with Ray and Liz again. Recently he became a father. Ray says Jason is unruly. Jason says Ray's a laugh, but doesn't want to be like him. Billingham writes, It's not my intention to shock, to offend, sensationalise, be political or whatever. Only to make work that is as spiritually meaningful as I can make it though the book has done exactly that. It welcomed the world into an otherwise private family album. Viewers were shocked at the poverty the family lives in. Devoid of memory, the viewer creates their own meanings for the photos, allowing them to construct a narrative of family they know very little of. What is interesting is that when questioned over ten years later if the photos brought back any memories, Billingham says that the images that have been released and what the public see don't bring back any specific memories. He goes on to say that the ones that were edited out do bring back memories as they are more like family snaps. They don't have so many of the pictorial qualities and meanings of the others, so he sees his family in them a lot more. Even the artist is now detached from his public family photos as the public are. They are almost strangers to him. We can attach meaning to other families' photos. It can be said that these two books, Immediate Family and Raise a Laugh, allow us to, in a sense, understand and get to know the family. They are no longer strangers to us, they are acquaintances. We can appreciate the narrative presented in these published family albums, as well as the beautiful and intriguing photographs. The key to the appreciation of a total stranger's photo is that of remembrance. Regardless of being absent at the moment the photo was taken, we can still appreciate the photo. How is this not the same for a stranger's family photo? One stranger's family snapshot may evoke a personal memory, a whole album would allow us to construct a narrative given the collection meaning. A snapshot of strangers on a beach may remind us of the time we did the same thing, or we may look at the photo and say, look at what we used to wear even though the viewer has no connection to the person in the image. We can transfer our memories onto images of similar moments. We appreciate the aesthetics of a beautiful image. We enjoy the narrative of a family album. Ultimately, we all interpret family photographs differently, regardless of it being of a stranger's family or not. Our individual life experiences allow us to attach meaning though of course it may not be the meaning intended by the family depicted. Attachment of memory is not necessary in order to appreciate family photos. They can be viewed as purely aesthetic artefacts. However, the depiction of a family encourages us to remember. 